Imagine boarding a train, not on tracks, not in tunnels, but one that levitates, shaped like a flying saucer. No, this isn't science fiction. This was an actual patent filed by British Rail in the 1970s. Welcome to one of the most bizarre and imaginative concepts ever to emerge from British engineering history, the British Rail Flying Saucer. In December 1970, British Railways filed a patent for a space vehicle, a craft that could potentially transport passengers not just across the country, but across the stars. The man behind this audacious idea was Charles Osmond Frederick, a British rail engineer working at the British Railways Technical Centre in Derby. Far from being a joke or publicity stunt, the proposal was deadly serious. The patent was granted in March 1973 and detailed a saucer-shaped craft powered by nuclear fusion. At the heart of the design was a fusion reactor triggered by laser beams and pulsed at high frequencies, over 1,000 times a second. This reaction would generate immense amounts of heat and energy, which would then be converted into electricity via thermionic converters. This power would feed into a ring of electromagnetic generators, possibly superconducting, to produce lift and thrust by accelerating subatomic particles downward through an exhaust vent. To protect passengers from radiation, a thick shield of metal was proposed above the reactor, and instead of rotating the craft to simulate gravity, as in traditional space concepts, this vehicle would use controlled acceleration and deceleration to create a gravity-like effect for those inside. It all sounds like something out of a Jerry Anderson program, ambitious, sleek and far ahead of its time but the reality was far more grounded. The design, while scientifically fascinating, had no clear path to feasibility. The technologies required, particularly stable, compact fusion and efficient superconducting magnets, were decades, if not centuries, away from practical application. The patent eventually lapsed in 1976 due to non-payment of renewal fees. When the patent resurfaced in the 2000s, it caused a media stir. Some mocked it as pure fantasy. The European Space Agency dismissed it as unrealistic, and the railway magazine joked that passengers would likely be fried by the radiation. Colin Pillinger, the scientist behind the Beagle 2 Mars lander, called the idea daft. Yet there's something undeniably charming about the whole concept. In an era of cuts, decline and dieselization, British Rail dared, at least on paper, to dream of the stars. The flying saucer stands as a strange, nostalgic symbol of a time when even a national railway dared to imagine a radically different future. Was it madness or vision? A footnote in transport history? Or a forgotten inspiration for tomorrow's science fiction? If you enjoyed this dive into one of the most unusual chapters of British Rail history, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. There's plenty more where that came from. Forgotten locomotives, abandoned stations and dreams that never quite left the platform. Thanks for watching.